Hi, Jemima. Hi, Trini. What a week. <laughs> what a week. I mean, this is like, you know, we've done a lot of um, chat about the book, but it is book week. It's like cake week, book week. And there's a lot in the book. And I thought what we could do is go into details in Closet Confessions over the next few weeks over things and look for the nuance. I gave you a sneak preview months ago mm. but i'm just going to start today with all these different star personalities because i think that we can all wake up and channel something differently we one day wake up feeling sexy another day we wake up feeling feminine and then another day we wake up and want to feel tough and strong so how we dress to channel that persona is i think an integral part of having confidence in yourself so i thought what i'd do today is i'd take you through um, very quickly, my favourite look from each of those that felt to me the epitome of what that represented. Great, I yeah? love this. It's one of my favourite sections of the book, so I'm excited. Well, that's great. It's one of my. It was one of my favourite to do, and some I found easy, and some I found a challenge. Like, it was very easy for me to do boho, for example, because boho is so many things I have in my wardrobe. It's that eclectic years of collecting and you can bring lots of different things together like I could look in my wardrobe now for boho I could say that could be a bit boho I could say leopard could be made a bit boho I could say little prince can be boho a fluted sleeve can be boho and and it jumps out at me you know yeah. so so that's easy and putting it together can be easy but I'm going to show you my favorite one now constructing a boho look takes my favorite shirt of all time from Topshop which is this kind of mad sleeved one. And I could do it with these trousers. They're from C'est La Vie in Italy, and they epitomize the concept of the flared mad trouser. And what I'm gonna do with this sleeve is just take it as what I call a half tuck, and the half tuck there, and then put my coat on. And I just want some of the fabric to come through there. And then you just pull out a bit of this. Oh, now the whole thing's coming out. So I could have the whole thing coming out. I don't mind that because there's something quite eccentric about it. But you could also wrap it and just have something and just pull it out. So if you're ever in dressmaking to make this kind of shirt, I think it's cool. Or I wrap it twice and I just tuck it back in like that. But what an amazing sleeve. Versatile to give that lovely little extra touch. And then makeup. Do my, do my boho hair moment. Ericsson Be Your Earrings and Shasha Lip to Cheek. A little bit of fortune on the eye with a little strength to strengthen the lash line and shasha lip cheek on the cheeks and hello lila on the lip one that i found i was so excited to do was minimalist because i am so used to wearing lots of color yes and what it did for me having done minimalist is it's helped me actually to now invest in some things that would fit in that category because I, what I, what was the thrill of minimalism, and this is kind of minimalism, but this is a bit I loved about the book, is how we actually did this, you know? We had seven pieces of clothing, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, three, eighteen looks. That was wow. sometimes an extra bag or a pair of shoes, but that was so satisfying to do, and all of us on the shoot at the time just thought, wow. So, you know, there were old things in my wardrobe there, so, you know, if we go through this, this was actually, um, this, I've got to get my bloody glasses on, haven't I? This is an old Zara dress with a sports Mac shirt underneath. And that's my clumpy boots. And I love that, but then I took the shirt off. Then I got the gilet I've had for 20 years from Zara with some trousers from Ted Baker or something. And then that shirt underneath, mm -hmm. a, a sleeveless top. Then I found I had an old Topshop Mac that came out in this PCP and... I put a, a bag over it with a chain. I felt so cool. So just all of these, I took the gilet and I just put it over nothing actually, and I could put a belt with it. It was the excitement of doing that. And then my favorite one has to be this, because I felt like I was an ad for Celine, which is my favorite <laughs> designer. So because the clothes are quite strong and black and white and quite big on me, my, it, it shows how small of a pinhead I have. So I have to be really careful. In photographs, it's harder. In real life, mm -hmm. because I'm talking and animated, my head will come back in proportion. Doesn't, yeah. Don't know if it works. I do think that sleek look is very minimalist, though. It is totally minimalist. And then, of course, we'd have the bag and yeah. a few things like that. And I could take it to a chunky um, boot as well, but mm -hmm. I, then it would be all one leg and it would be a different look. It's nice to see that A break, little bit of skin. Yeah. yeah. 
How does it make you feel when you put these layers on? A mixture, in, yeah. a mixture, because for some people this is a more, this combination can lead to a religious uniform, and for other people this can lead to, you work in the catering industry, you know, people have connotations with colours, mm. and black and white and where it sits. I think that it can be the chicest thing to wear. I love colour and I embrace colour. There's something that I also love about things that feel architectural. Mm. And so for me, this feels architectural and I love wearing a bit of architecture on my face, yeah. on my body. Mm. So what are those glasses there? Those glasses are good too. I think we might do that. Oh, and maybe cool. it would just turn into a different look. Softly feminine for me can sometimes be tricky because how I would do softly feminine 10 years ago would be with a lot more frill and flounce. It's about the fabrics, it's about the softness. Yeah. It's Is about it about the print? It's about the print, because we did do a lot of print with Softly Feminine, but there was, it was more, I'd say, texture. Okay. That joy of those different, this is one of my favorite ones. And this is a very old, I think I got this in ASOS, this yeah. coat. This is a GMB Stavali, which I hated on its own because the color never suited me. I got an old pair of cost trousers underneath. I've got these Zara old shoes that were like a Roger Vivier, a crossbody bag to give it a sort of more modern look. I love the staggered different hemlines. I like the softness of this fabric here. And then I, I, the kind of, this was a lovely sort of a, a, an organza, but it had weight to it. So I think these textures are what made me feel feminine. That was okay. probably my favorite look actually. It might be perfect, but I liked that earring because the Ooh. detail had the depth of tone there and it had the blush effect here. And these are really, I think, I can't even remember where I got them. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, were they H&M? Are they H&M? They might be nature. Yeah. I think the earrings and the dress both have that sort of colouring where you don't know exactly what colour it is when you first see exactly it. Exactly right. And it's like... It's sort of oyster meets blush meets something else. And it yeah. reflects your hair, like the brownness of the earring yeah. and then it, the dress. Bringing it all together. And then we add on my ASOS um, coat mm -hmm. like that. And then we want to make it fully day. And I'm taking a really old Celine bag, which is off white. And there's my look. Oh, so you've come slightly off white just so it's not too yeah. bright? Yeah. Okay. And it just, just because it's softer. I think white is not softly feminine. Okay. I think oyster and ecru mm. and cream are softly feminine. You can definitely do a lovely long white drapey dress, but I think for me, this makes me do softer things when I wear these oystery colours. This is another one too, because this worked in an interesting way. When I was putting this on, I thought to myself, I never put a top on that comes lower because then if you didn't see perhaps yeah. where my waist was, you'd think I had a very long torso. Do you mm -hmm. see how long that torso looks? So by having it slightly see-through, you saw the height of my trousers. It elongated my body and there was an incredible, the femininity was all in the top. Yeah. Um, it was the kind of heroine of the piece. Because those trousers aren't particularly feminine, are they? They're, they're not. They're just a long, wide leg trouser. Yeah. Really old trouser. That was Zara and Mrs. Zimmerman. And the makeup was very important because this is very, it's very soft. I haven't got really hard makeup on. What are you adding on, John? This is just virtue. This is just to create light on the lid. We had wisdom as a base. It's nice and soft, the two. So it's like a spotlight, mm. really. I think it's really important, the makeup for Softly Feminine, because I don't yeah. see those hard red lips there. I think everything is a palette like this, Joe. A bit of Cordy, a bit of Dido, a bit of wigs, a little bit mm. of Maddie, and then neutral colors. We've got a bit of virtue and fortune here. There's a femininity to the makeup and the blusher is soft and really, where, how, like- It's a little bit you, higher, we'd say a little, a little bit, bit higher. higher. So yeah. it's less on the apples of the cheek and more brought up just so it's more fresh and just to lift everything up. And yeah. the skin yeah. is everything as well. Yeah. So this is definitely a look where you have that glow, that gentle glow. So we've got that today by putting candlelight um, highlighter underneath the makeup, mm. which is John's trick I learned from him, and then de-stress over. And when I was doing modern classic, there's a big difference between modern classic and classic. Yeah, this is what I need help with, okay. Trini. <laughs> yeah. So to me, 
when I was going through it in my head, that there's this one piece that feels modern. So it was just the one detail, like I had the long waistcoat come out from what would be a black jacket with trousers. Then in this one, I had the silver. So it's that extra detail. Everything else is really classic. This is like Jennifer Aniston when she dresses really classic mm -hmm. in the morning show. She had this look that was all gray, which I was obsessed with. And I tried to channel that. It's that, what they call now, what do they call it when Gwyneth Paltrow was on trial? The sort oh, of bum. yeah. It's that sort of understated expense. I, what did, oh, oh what? quiet luxury. Quiet luxury. So is it quiet luxury, modern classic? I think modern classic has a little bit more originality to it. So okay. you might have an unusual ring, you might have a one big bracelet, you might have a very cool shoe, and then everything else is classic, it's just that one yeah. extra piece. I love how you've done a red lip on this look. Yeah, that, I mean, that was, in a way, the sort of, the modern classic was putting the belt um, buckle to the side slightly, mm. do you remember? Yes. Doing it with the trainer instead of a high heel black patent shoe, the red lip, and this kind of quite 1940s, quite um, stylized hair. Mm. I, I, I've got to say, I think that was one of my favorite looks. Yeah. I would wear it with um, my old Zara coat, which I feel just goes brilliantly to diffuse the dominance of the check by layering out the check on. Yeah. Now, is that a modern classic rule or not? That's the thing, because I want you to look at this like this, clean, and then I'd probably do a black bag. Oh, I might do it more ladylike. Like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So take that in. One detail, taking it to the side. Mm -hmm. So there's just that little detail there. Up the ante. Up the ante. <laughs> so that I would feel good in. Yeah. So we can do a pattern in modern classic, but there has to be a uniformity in the color. I think monochrome is a way to go. So it could be a black and white stripe as well could be a way of doing it, but this feels the loudest that a modern classic might go. I like that, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I need to practice this category. We need to practice this category again, and we'll do more of these. What I'm gonna do is, as we go through Closet Confessions, I'm gonna look at other things that we could use to create things. Okay. Rock Chick, who doesn't wanna be a rock chick? It was, the, it was the easiest one to do. And I think that Rock Chick, there's the leather jacket, there's a kind of really sexy Vs going on. Rock chicks, they like boots of any kind. So cowboy boots, little crop ones, these are Sarah, um, or a platform, Prada, uh, Prada Zara. It's, I, I would say Prada Zara because both of them do it. But today I'm gonna do a skinny black jean from Zara and a Prada platform. So it is a real Prada Zara moment. Makeup is Universe and Eugenie, all sort of like I've slept in it. T-shirt. A little faux fur, vintage -y, whatever it is, um, number like that, and a scarf. And the scarf is tied long and thin because you don't do clever things with scarves, you just keep them cool. And then the uh, jeans are Zara, and that's my classic rock chick moment. And then eclectic is where you, in a way, you just, you really push the boat out. You really just say, let me just take, you know, let me take this, this um, orange bag and then I gotta put it with that purple and then I kind of like the yellow underneath and I'm just like, I've gone mad. But somehow there's something about it that will work. Or I might say, oh, I love this bag. So I'm gonna do that. I need to have some kind of pink somewhere. So I'm gonna get some kind of pink. I might do that outfit with it. And then my shoe might be brown and I might then put lots of mad necklaces on. So like more is more? More is more is more. I'm gonna see if you can understand why. More is more is more. So let me show you now my more is more is more favorite look. Eclectic. So we got this beautiful necklace that I got in India when I went to a wedding there. And then I've taken the cuffs, put them on the end. This green is me and them, which I got at Christmas. And these are the Essential Antwerps with nice. the Zara shoe. And then I'm gonna add on the coat just for that moment. So you could just have a furry coat. I love the gold cuff coming out. I think every yeah. Trinity tribe should think about cutting something off and making the cuffs because <laughs> they're really good. And then we can put the glasses on, which are from Morden Morden, Australia. And then we can just really over egg the pudding and get this. I got this Gucci belt from Vista Village um, for literally 90 quid. Perfect combination, Perfect combination of all those colors. Very eclectic. And finally, we've got 
always sexy. Now, all women around the world, it doesn't matter where they're from, are sexy, but there is something about the French being sexy, isn't there? It's the chicness. It's the chicness and the sexiness. So, so the definition of that is by looking and being inspired by those kind of women and thing, and just studying them and thinking, all right, would I? I was so happy to do this. And this actually always sexy inspired me to go and just, just do that bloody cover with the horse on it. It was that feeling of celebrating your body and, and feeling very confident sexually. And so I, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Clean lines too. Mm -hmm. So this was a very clean dress, Victoria Beckham dress with one necklace on the side. Um, and then this is just, I think I love this because it was a very plain coat with no buttons, t-shirt a bit, a bit sort of like mm -hmm. pulled out a bit, very clean back shoe, high stiletto. And what a way to get into it. Like that's just a hint, isn't it? it just a hint. And, and that makeup. messy hair, very clean skin. Um, and have I you got a smoky that. eye? And I got a smoky eye nearly Very all the time. Cool. And then kind of long wide leg trousers, God, I don't know where they are, a bra showing, Ooh, you know. What's underneath? Nothing but the bra, actually, <laughs> and a little jacket pulled together from Zara with a little belt. And I love that because mm. there was something about the, I wasn't topping and towing. I think when you top and tow, you might, if you're not used to doing that look, feel vulnerable. What I mean is you wear a really short skirt, skirt and a really deep V. You need something that's giving you the confidence if you're not used to doing it that covers, mm -hmm. and then you have something else that's like, I'm here and I mm. feel good. Yeah, a bit of a balance. A bit of a balance. So I, I'm showing you my favorite look now from Always Sexy when I was shooting it. We got some behind the scenes footage. Wearing a jacket with another, nothing underneath, but in this instance, you need a bra. So it is a bra underneath with something deep here. And this is about, actually it's not showing classic, so sexy on the bottom half because it's very loose, but there's something about the winched in waist and the body conness of making this Zara jacket feel really fitted. And then Zara belt over the top, trouser Joseph. So sexy is about showing off your waist, isn't it? Yeah. All the looks we've done, we've kind of had that emphasis on the waist. So in this instance, it's about putting a belt over a jacket, winching it in, having the clean deep V and um, the bra underneath to save any accidents. Is that because it's so clean because the belt is the jewellery? The belt is the jewellery, exactly. Mm. Yeah. I love that. But do think about who you'd like to channel the most. Really, if you've got the book, just put them in order. And maybe each week with me, I'm going to go through with you and go into a few more details, give you more inspiration, and that you can think, okay, that's what I'm going to do this week. And if you're starting to do them this week, please send pictures of what you've done, because I'd love to see them. Totally. All right. Okay, I'm off to go and read. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.